The Arkham game series is a series of four games that focuses on Batman and his struggle to protect Gotham from its criminal inhabitants. Sadly, a fifth game is yet to be announced, though hopefully more games will be made in the future, as this is one of the best game series ever made, and I would say undoubtedly the best superhero game series ever made. Though the Injustice games do give them a run for their money. One of the great things about the games is their fantastic campaign stories, which are brilliantly written and feature a great deal of deaths, some of which are supervillains. And this is the list of the five best supervillain deaths. Needless to say, this video contains a lot of spoilers, so consider yourself warned. And these deaths are awarded for how entertaining they are to watch, how well they match the character's personality, and how much they impact the heroes and the stories of the game. Number five, Black Mask. In the game Batman Arkham Knight, the player can download the Red Hood pack, which, as the name suggests, lets the player play as Jason Todd in his Red Hood persona. Much like the movie Batman Under the Red Hood, the game sees Jason Todd go after Black Mask, hunting him down for a reason that's never really made clear, other than he's a criminal and the Red Hood is just intent on taking him down. He fights his henchmen to get information on the crime boss, with great moments such as this. You ain't gonna kill me! You ain't gonna kill me! Do I look like Batman to you? Rethink your answer before I fill you up with lead. Downtown, his office. But you ain't gonna get him. He knows you're coming, freak. Then he finally comes face to face with Black Mask. Well, kind of face to face since they're both wearing masks. Black Mask tries to deal for his life, but Jason Todd only wants one thing from him. Guns, weapons, whatever you want. Please, I'll take the plane. We've got them. Never show my face again. Anywhere you want. I'll go anywhere. How about you go to hell? Say out a joker for me. It's a pretty great moment in the game. The Red Hood has always been one of the more interesting members of the Bat family, and this is a very entertaining, if a little cliched, death scene. Number four, Talia al Ghul. Next, we have Talia al Ghul in Batman Arkham City. Talia al Ghul is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul and is one of the greatest loves of Bruce Wayne's life and of course is the mother of Batman's son, Damian Wayne, and in the Injustice universe, mother of his daughter, Afana Sia al Ghul. Talia features in the Arkham City game, and though some might say that she isn't a villain, as she does help Batman from time to time, she still does plenty of evil things, and she's certainly not a hero. She is in Gotham City with the League of Shadows, and is captured by the Joker, or rather she makes a deal to save Batman's life, that sees her captured by the Joker. Free Batman and we will give you the secret of immortality. Don't do it, Talia. He'll be unstoppable. What? You mean she's uh. telling the truth? Immortal? Do we have a deal? No! Oh, shut up! <sighs> Her death comes after she escapes the Joker's grip and stabs her sword through his chest, ending his reign of terror. Talia, no! <laughs> Unfortunately, it turns out that the Joker she kills is an imposter, and instead she has attacked Clayface, a shapeshifter who easily survives the sword wound she inflicted on him as he's all but immortal. After she thinks she has won and the Joker is dead, she is shot in the back by the real Joker who has been watching the scene from the shadows. The wound is fatal and she dies in seconds. Talia! Oh. I'm sorry, beloved. I didn't know. This scene demonstrates very well the reason why no one ever kills the Joker, because it's bloody difficult to do. This death scene was a shattering moment for Batman, as next to Selina Kyle, Talia was the greatest love of his life. A better world. And it's not an easy death for him to shake, as it affects him for months to come after. I'm in. Any news, Barb? No. He's been gone two days. I'm worried. You know what he's been like since? I'll find him. I'd say that this is not only the best death scene Talia al Ghul has ever had, but the best and most accurate version of Talia al Ghul there is in media, in terms of sticking to the source material. Now of course, Talia's father is Ra's al Ghul, who has several Lazarus pits that can resurrect the dead, so you may think that Talia could just be placed in one of these pits and brought back to life. In fact, there is actually a pit a few floors down from where Talia dies. Unfortunately, Batman destroys the pit to stop the Joker from using it. And 
and Ra's al Ghul doesn't share the Lazarus Pits with anyone, not even his own daughter. Though of course it is possible that she could later be resurrected by a Lazarus Pit if more of the Arkham games are ever made. Number 3. Poison Ivy The death of Poison Ivy in the game Batman Arkham Knight was quite unexpected. She has the power to control plants at the molecular level, which makes her an extremely powerful individual. It's such a shame that his vile toxin has no effect on me. Nature always wins. Unlike most villains, she isn't just out for herself, but instead she only wants to protect the plants of the world, and she has no problem killing humans to achieve this goal, as she considers human life as secondary and doesn't mind killing them to save plants. Charming. But only one of us is getting out of this cell. <laughs> no! 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 Which makes her death all the more confusing, as her final act saves Gotham and the humans inside the city. She sacrifices herself to remove the fear toxin from Gotham City. Now admittedly when Batman first asks Poison Ivy for help, she does say And I should trust you, why? Because without your help, every plant in this city will die. So it is possible that she did this just to save the city's plants, and saving humans was just a side effect. But even still, her final act did save human lives. Of course this doesn't cancel out all the evil acts she did in her life, but it does help. Though one question that isn't answered is the fact that Batman says every plant in Gotham will die. And the question is, is he going to kill them, or is it Scarecrow's toxin that will destroy them? It's never really made clear, but in either case, this is a well done scene that makes you feel sorry for the villain in her final moments, which is always a great way to watch a villain die. And without her sacrifice, then there seems to be no way that Batman could have saved Gotham City, so it's crucial to the video game's plot. Number 2. Ra's al Ghul Having Ra's al Ghul on this list may seem odd, since he dies all the time, and is usually just thrown in the Lazarus pit and brought back to life. However, in the DLC Season of Infamy, in the fourth game Batman Arkham Knight, Ra's al Ghul dies for the final time. The Lazarus Pit isn't working on his body anymore. Basically, he's just too old and so it's losing its effect on him. You've brought him back too many times. The Lazarus Dream's all that's keeping him alive. Batman is recruited to retrieve an older version of the Lazarus Pit chemical that can save his life. The Rebels have found another pit. A purer source. A sample of his essence is all he would need. Batman, of course, says no, but the League blackmails him. I won't help you revive him. Then you'll face the consequences of war. We know you, Detective. You will not let innocents die. Yet you will not kill the demon's head to prevent their deaths. You will do as we ask, because your precious morality compels you to. The League of Assassins would just get it themselves, but Ra's al Ghul's daughter is leading a mutiny, and half the League follows her now and is stopping the rest of the League from getting the Lazarus Pit chemical. Now as mentioned, Talia al Ghul is dead at this point, and the daughter leading the rebellion is Nyssa, Ra's al Ghul's other daughter. Does Ra's know his daughter fights for the rebels? The rebels fight for me. And that zombie no longer knows his own name, or the day of the week, or that his other daughter died. She tells Batman that he can give her father the Lazarus Pit chemical and save his life, or let him finally die. It's up to him. So when he goes back to see Ra's al Ghul, he has a difficult decision to make. Sir, if you don't mind, I just wanted to suggest that given Ra's supernatural longevity and his current state of artificially prolonged existence, not to mention the fact that he has, in essence, already died, a case could be made that, well, um, yeah. I swore I'd never kill. He's a dangerous, uncompromising zealot, sir. 
Restored to full strength, there's no telling what he'll do or who he might hurt. Is preventing some ungodly resurrection truly the same as taking a life? What would you do, Alfred? I don't know, sir, but I'll stand by you, whatever you choose. And when he confronts Ra's al Ghul, the player is given the choice of whether or not to save him. If you do save him, then Ra's al Ghul lives and his daughter Nyssa dies. However, if you choose not to give him the Lazarus Pit chemical, then Ra's al Ghul dies and Nyssa lives. Though unfortunately, you don't see his death. All we get is this scene. Detective. <sighs> Proud of you. Even still, it's a powerful moment, as it shows that Batman has made a decision that he knows will lead to Rachel Gould's death. Now, some might say that this is the same as murder, and some might say that not saving someone doesn't count as murder. But in either case, it still makes Batman uncomfortable. And the fact that we don't actually see the death, at least in my mind, is better, because Batman doesn't see the death either. He only knows that it will happen soon. And as we as the audience only see what Batman sees, it makes it a more profound moment, as we're in the same position as Batman. And the fact that the player gets to decide whether or not he dies, which incidentally is the only death in the series the player can control, almost made this death make the top spot on this list. But it was just beaten by, number one, the Joker. Without question, the best death in the video games was the Joker's in Batman Arkham City. It was not only entirely unexpected, it was also a perfect aim for the Clown Prince of Crime. The whole game sees the Joker desperate to get a cure for his terminal illness, an illness that he himself was responsible for when he injected himself with various chemicals in the first game, Batman Arkham Asylum. This left something in his blood that is slowly killing him. The Joker recruits Batman and manipulates him into getting the cure for him. Imagine sucking down that last breath knowing that Gotham is doing the same. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, didn't I say? I've spent weeks shipping samples of my blood to emergency rooms all over the city. But in the game's final scene, Batman isn't sure whether or not to give the cure to the Joker. The Joker has just killed Talia al Ghul, one of Batman's greatest loves, along with the hundreds of others he's hurt and killed in the past. And so Batman knows that if he saves the Joker, more people will be hurt in the future by him. I killed your girlfriend, poisoned Gotham in hell. <laughs> it's not even breakfast. <laughs> but so what? We all know you'll save me. Every decision you've ever made ends with death and misery. People die. So the Joker is scared that Batman will not give him the cure, and so he attacks Batman to get it and stabs Batman in the arm, which causes him to drop the vial that the cure is in. Are you happy now? Thus the Joker is responsible for his own death, and it's a beautiful ending for the Joker, and has this great moment. Do you want to know something funny? Even after everything you've done, I would have saved you. <laughs> you know, that actually is... pretty funny! This death is ironic and sees the Joker as the very architect of his own destruction, and it's quite frankly brilliant. It's a perfect end for the Joker, not to mention it's completely out of the blue. During the whole time I was playing this game, I didn't for one second think that the Joker would actually be killed off, as he's such a great villain of Batman's, and I couldn't see why the game makers would possibly want to get rid of him. But they did. Though admittedly he was still in the next video game, Batman Arkham Knight. Though he was still dead in the game and came back purely as an hallucination in Batman's mind. That and a few flashbacks, such as Batgirl's DLC game level. It's been a blast. <laughs> the next one's for you, kiddo. Toodles. <laughs> 
But even still, this was a beautiful moment. Though in the Arkham Knight game, it is revealed that Batman had actually been planning to not give Joker the cure and to let the Joker die. Newsflash! You killed me! I was there, remember? You destroyed my cure right in front of me! <laughs> Watch me choke on my last laugh! And then, after killing me, you said you would have shared. <laughs> You couldn't admit I'd won, could you? Not even as a parting gift. But now I'm on the inside. Ooh. We both know the truth. Yes, you've killed before. And tonight, I'll make you do it again. With that being said, the Joker is a colossal liar, so it's possible this is just one of his many lies. And I certainly hope so, because as much as I've always wanted Batman to kill the Joker, I think the Joker causing his own death is a much more poetic end. And that is the 5 best deaths of the villains in the Arkham game series. Do you agree with this list, or do you think it should be a different order of deaths? And what was your favourite death in the Arkham game series? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needlemouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.